bending moment diagram, or the shear force diagram, also attempt to sketch the final deflected shear. That's it. So we've covered the basic concepts as well. Now we go ahead and get some numerical problems. We'll begin with small problems, then we go to big ones. Take this problem. Please give it a shot. If you've got your pencil and paper with you, try it. What is this problem? I've got a two-span continuous beam, and the problem is, for some, you have to analyze this problem. Okay. Another problem is, and this really tests your ability to gauge the difference between a fixed support and a simple support. At C, instead of fixity, I make it a roller support. You now, my first question to you is, can you draw the probable deflected shapes of these two due to the rotation slip at theta? And can you also predict the shape of the bending moment diagram? Please give it a try. Draw the deflected shapes for these two where you have a rotational slip theta a clockwise as shown. Just draw the deflected shape. If you and draw the bending moment diagram. Well, the deflected shape for the first one may be something like that. Okay, remember at theta c the slope should be zero. Whereas in the second case, which we are now going to draw that slope won't be zero. So, that's a bending moment diagram. So, you'll get something like this. Okay. You must be able to intuitively draw this. You may get it wrong in the beginning. But, <clears throat> it's important to note that you get a reversal in curvature in some beams and you don't get them in other beams. And there's a point of contraflexure which separates out the sagging moment from the hogging moment. Okay. Now, in all these cases, the bending moment diagram, we are drawing on the tension side. That's a good practice. And uh, whenever it is, um, so strictly speaking, the sagging moment should be shown positive. Sagging moment should be shown positive. Hogging moment should be shown negative. So, there's a small error here which needs correct. Okay, how do we solve this problem? Well, let's go through it step by step. Here, you don't have any loads, no direct action. So, MFAB, MFBA, MFBC, and MFCB are all zero. Now, you write down the slope deflection equation. Very easy to write them. Remember, do them mechanically. MF, MAB, MBA, and MBC, MCB, and knock off whatever you know to be zero. In this case, all the fixed end moments are zero, and the only unknown is theta b. Theta c is zero. Theta a is known. So you can plug in all those values, and you'll find that it simplifies. It simplifies to these two equations. So look again. Now, you need to invoke EI by L. EI is given to you as 80,000 kilonewton meter squared. L is known for that beam, 4 meters for AB, and for BC it is uh, 2 meters. You need only for AB. In those values, you will get 4 equations. And clearly, the only unknown is theta B. If you know theta B, you can get the bending moments. How do you get theta B? You need an equilibrium equation. What is the equilibrium equation? Very simple. The equilibrium equation is, is, you can write this in matrix, is MBA plus M. And uh, plug in those values, and you will get the answers. From the answers, you can interpret whether they are clockwise or anticlockwise. If it's positive, it's clockwise. If it's, anti, if it's negative, it's anticlockwise. And then you draw the free body diagram first. So you got the answers there. MAB is plus 146.67. MBA is plus 53.33. MBC is minus 53.33. And MCB is minus 26.67. So you put the arrows correctly, clockwise for MAB, clockwise for MBA, for MCB. Put the right values. You can see that. MBA and MBC neutralize each other. 
It's exactly the way it's meant to be. The free body diagram are not complete. You need to add something to satisfy equilibrium. You need to add, put the vertical reactions. Very easy to do. You add up the two moments and divide by the span, you will get the reactions. And then you are in a position to even and draw the shear force diagram and draw the bending moment. Okay. The sagging moment should be drawn positive. Okay. Now let's take uh, the example where we have a roller support at C. Simple, similar. Now we'll again, now you have one more unknown. Have you noticed? There's a simplification possible. We'll see it in the next class tomorrow, but today we'll pretend we, we don't know theta C. And we now need two equations, but the method is simple. We proceed. We write down the similar equations. We have not repeated it here. It's exactly the same, MAB, MBA. And now we leave theta C there. Theta C is an unknown. And uh, if you write down the equation in matrix form, they look like this. Equilibrium equation. You have MCB equal to 0 and MBA plus MBC equal to 0. Right? You can substitute that value here and uh, proceed. You will get a solution for theta B. Plug it there in the original equation. You got the answers. And once you have the answers, you draw the free body diagram. Draw the shear force diagram. Draw the bending moment diagram. Now it's good to compare both these problems and look at the solutions. You will find that slight difference. Okay, there is a slight difference. When you have fixity at C, you've got a negative moment there at C. Otherwise, the moment there is zero. Actually, you have a sagging moment. It should be positive. Okay, so I request you to try this example uh, with a problem, the regular kind of problem you get in your examinations and textbooks. A two span continuous beam with loads as shown here, EI is constant. How do you proceed? Well, first, what's the first step? You have to identify the degree of kinematic indeterminacy, the unknown rotation. Well, you can try to draw the deflected shape, and you can clearly see that the only unknown rotation here is theta b, which you assume clockwise positive. Is there a question? Yeah. Can I? Huh? Okay, there seems to be a question. I'm not able to. EI is constant, then why it is varying for the other beam segment? Well, in any problem, you can have any specified EI. The, in the problem we just solved, EI was constant. That's all. So if someone gives different values of EI, we can handle it. In the example problem, in the demonstration of slope deflection method, we took a case where the EIs were different. But in the numerical problem we solved in example 1, they were the same. I hope that clarifies. Okay. Here you have again EI constant. Okay. Please solve this problem. What do you do next? Find out the fixed end moments. Please do this. UDL one side, so you can even draw a sketch of what the fixed end beam looks like. These are the fixed end moments for AB. Right? Minus Q naught L squared by 12 and plus Q naught L squared by 12. What about element B? BC. Element B, the best of us, 
whether to put w a b squared or w a squared b pause a moment and think when the load is closer to a support the moment at that the fixed moment at that support will be more than at the distant support right so whichever is larger is the value you should use so that's why you say a b squared for the first case so it's easy to remember so i hope you've got these numbers and now let's proceed you've got the fixed end moments what do you do next you write down the slope deflection equations for the two beams you can write the fixed end moments in matrix form like this and proceed so you write down mechanically mab is mf ab plus 4ei by l theta a plus 2ei by l theta b similarly mf ba similarly mbc and similarly mcd okay now you delete what you know to be zero theta c is zero theta a is zero so you can knock them off and you can substitute the values of the fixed end moments that you've got so the four equations simplify to these four and there's only one unknown in them the unknown is theta b what do we do next next write down the equilibrium equation there's only one unknown so only one equilibrium equation you know what it is theta b mba plus mbc is zero pick up those two equations the second and third add them up put them equal to zero and you can solve for ei theta b you get a positive value um, plug in that value of theta b and you'll get the answers the answers are very easy you've got the bending moments now it doesn't end here you after this you draw the free body diagrams write down the answers separate out your beams draw the moments minus 19.58 plus 20.83 minus 20.83 plus plus 8.33 should be clockwise right should be clockwise that's a mistake and uh, then you must correctly get the uh, uh, reactions I hope these reactions are correct. You have to check them out. That 8.33 should be clockwise. Draw the shear force diagram and draw the uh, bending moment diagram. But the bending moment diagram seems to be correct. Now we look at something uh, which apparently looks more difficult, but don't get scared. This is what we call a frame. Instead of all the elements being in one line now they are not in the same line okay a b and b c are perpendicular to each other simple problem can you draw the deflected shape of this before we proceed right theta a is zero theta c is zero theta b will rotate will it rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise supposing the vertical element BC was not there and you had a simple support there, you know it will rotate anti-clockwise. Well, BC only brings in some rotational stiffness, that's all. So, you must be able to draw this picture and that unknown rotation there is your unknown theta B. Okay, so straight away you know this is a single unknown rotation problem and go ahead and solve the problem. What do you do next? You write down your fixed end moments. You have only A, B with unknown fixed end moments. You can solve this very easily. Minus Q naught L squared by 12 plus Q naught L squared by 12. The element B, C has no fixed end moments. So that's it. Very simple. What do you do next? Next, you write down the end moments for A, B, and B, C mechanically. Okay. And by now, you should be good at this. MAB is MFAB plus 4EI by L theta A plus 2EI by L theta B. MBA is this, MBC is this, and MCB is this. Only one unknown theta B because you can knock off theta C and theta A. They are both zero. Substitute for MF and you've got four equations. 
very simple, not difficult. What do you do next? You have to get theta b. To get theta b, you have to write down an equilibrium equation. Equilibrium equation is simple. What is it? MBA plus MBC must add up to zero. So you can write it in matrix form for convenience. And when you put it equal to zero, you can add up the second and third equation, solve it, and you get EI theta b equal to something. Plug this value into these equations. I am writing it here for convenience like this. You have got the answer. So, although when you actually do it, it will take a little more time than what I have shown here for speeding up, I am showing you it is actually very easy. Very easy. And once you plug in those values, you can draw the the bodies. Now you have to draw it with the same orientation as in the original 11. There is no residual moment at B. Now you are ready to draw the other reaction. So first, for the vertical element, you can add up these two moments, divide by the height, you get the shear forces 5.71, which appear as actual forces in element AB. This is the difference between the beam and the frame. You now have actual forces which were not there in the beam. Then you find the reactions in the beam, the shears in the beam, and very easy to do. Of course, to do this, you have to first take the 15 kilonewton per meter into 4 divided by 2, and then take the end moment 24.28 minus 11.43 divided by 4. It will add up to A and subtract from B. And then whatever vertical reaction you get at B will go into the vertical element BC. So you have to put that also. That completes your free body. You are in a position to draw three diagrams. Shear force diagram, actual force diagram, bending moment diagram. But in an examination, you may be asked maybe just a bending moment diagram. So this is the shear force diagram. This is a bending moment diagram. This is the actual force diagram. Please note the actual force is compressive in element BC and in element AB. Right, now we come to the last topic in today's session. How to take advantage of symmetry in 